Greetings, oh people of the internet, and welcome to part two of uh, the Required JS uh, Made Rid Ridiculously Easy series. In just tenish minutes, well, it's going to be a bit more than ten minutes now for sure. All right, first off, I just want to thank um, Vivek Doshi. So he's the first person who asked about part two. So I'd made part one. If you haven't seen that, by the way, you probably want to check it out because. It's part one. You can't view part two without watching part one first. That's horrible. It's like watching a TV series from season three when you haven't seen season one or two. It's a crime. It's a crime against humanity. So please, watch part one if you haven't. Link is in the description below. So Mr. Vivek, thank you very much for asking about part two. I was waiting for someone to ask, you know? <laughs> so thank you for doing that first. All right, so let's get started. The remaining topics we need to cover are, there's two of them, really. It's just AM-defying scripts. So Require.js doesn't work with all scripts. and Actually, it does, but you need to do something to make it work. You can't just copy and paste scripts and expect them to work directly. So I'll show you exactly how to do that. So AM-defying scripts. I made that word up, by the way. Don't try looking it up in a dictionary. And the second part is using the amazing R.js optimizer. We'll talk a bit about that and why you want to use it in the first place. So part one, am defying scripts. How is it done? How do you make a script work? Let me start by giving you an example because examples are great. Now, on a project I'm working on now, it needs this SHA-256 cryptographic hash algorithm. And basically what it does is if you have a password, so password, it generates a weird looking hash. So you store the hash, and then when you want to compare passwords, you compare hashes. So it's a lot more secure. People can't figure out the password from the hash. It's not reversible. So I, I needed to use this in a project that I'm working on. And um, just one look at the source code you know, tells me that it's not compatible with the required JS. How do I know? Well, it doesn't have that define thing that you usually see in required JS. They, they do a test for required JS. I mean, most JavaScript libraries are not compatible with required JS out the box. So how do we make it work? Yeah, as in, how on earth are we going to make this work? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's very simple. Let's just start by copying all the code. Just copy all that good stuff. Yep, go all the way down and just copy all that. Right? Click and copy. All right, we don't need you anymore. And now we're going to create a new file. And we're going to type one line in there. Just say define open it and then call function and just do that so you, you're probably familiar with this if not then go watch part one um, inside here there's nothing because it, it doesn't require anything if it requires jQuery like if you have I don't know a jQuery plugin or anything then you can put jQuery in there if it doesn't then just ignore it and then paste your code in here and that's it that's all you need to do there you go All right. Now I've already done this for this little guy, so if I go to if I go to assets lib there it is, SHA two fifty six. I did the exact same thing. One thing I did do is is I added the return at the end. So you need to return the SHA two fifty six variable. Some libraries need it, some don't. If it's a jQuery plugin, then it most likely just adds itself to the jQuery global. So you don't really need to do that. But in some cases like this, it, we actually need to return something because it has many functions in there that we can call. All right, so just close that. And then now what you need to do is you need to add it to your common JS, which I've already done here. So I just added SHA-256 and referenced lib slash SHA-256.js, which is where I put my file. And that's it. We're ready to roll. Now this thing should work. Let's give it a try just to make sure. So I'm going to add it in. All right, so I have I have my main file calls index.js. I'm going to I'm just going to show you how it's done. So I'll call sha256 in here and put it in a new variable. I don't know call it gorilla. You can call this anything just like we said in part 1. Now I'm going to call gorilla.hash, that's the function and pass abc. Let's just do a simple alert here. And save that. And now when we try and uh, refresh our our main page right here, you're going to see that, whoa, there you go. There is your variable. B, A, 7, 8, whatever. That's it right there. And um, we know that the hash is working. So great. Awesome. You just remove this madness from here. Just kill that. The file back to how it was. 
All right, that's good, that's good. All right, so that's basically how you aim to five scripts. That generally works with the same way with almost everything you would do, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And it's pretty straightforward. And um, the second part, yeah, using the amazing R.js optimizer. Now, first off, why on earth would you want to use the optimizer? Well, let me tell you. So this looks great. I mean, um, your index.js file has a bunch of stuff. It's got comments, you know. You have many files, you got comments and great stuff, it's fantastic. The problem is that you've got all these different files. So you've got jQuery here, jgestures, bootstrap, whatever, all these different files that are getting loaded on separate HTTP calls. Now anyone that knows anything about the internet and optimization tells you reduce the number of HTTP calls that you make. It's a horrible thing to do because it, it minimizes the user experience. It's horrible. It, it makes the web page slow. So you need to combine files as much as you possibly can. And that's why you would need the R.js optimizer. It combines the files for you. So instead of having all this, let me show you an example that I did earlier. You would have something like this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Look at that. Just one file. One file with everything. And then you could have individual pages with like their own little nuances. Usually you'd have two pages, right? And this tells you the little stuff in the page index, the one we just made. All right, so let me show you how that's done. It's really straightforward. But first, we need to set a few things up. We need to set up r.js to work on your laptop or whatever it is, your server. So in order to do that, you need to have Node.js. What is Node.js? Well, it's kind of like this weird server-side language where you type in um, in JavaScript, <laughs> of all things. All right, so if you don't have it, you're going to have to do a sudo app-get install. And in my case, I already have it, so I don't have to install it again. Duh. And the second thing you need is the r.js file. The r.js file. No, come on. Come on, just go in there. Yeah, you'll find it at this, um, at jberks. He's the guy who did require JS, so he made this r.js optimizer. So just download that, just download that from here, and uh, you should be good to go. So dist.js, and then just download, it's like 25,000 lines of madness, but man is it awesome. I'll show you in a bit what I mean by that, but whoa. Alright, so let me close that, um, the link you'll find in the description. Now, okay, so take that r.js file and put it in um, your tools folder. So just a bit about how I kind of arrange my um, my workspace. I typically have three folders, tools, ww, and ww built. Tools is where I put my stuff, and um, that includes the r.js file. That's the madness, the 25,000 lines I just showed you. And then, um, and then I put a bunch of other stuff that also helps me with pushing the scripts and whatever. Nothing to do with the project, though. And then my WW folders where I have all my PHP goodness and all that, you know, the assets, the JavaScript files and all that, that all goes in the WW folder. And WW built folder is where all that optimization stuff goes into play. So this is, this built folder is ready to be pushed to the production server. Okay, so it's all optimized and looks pretty and everything. Well, it looks ugly, depending on your point of view, I guess. To me, it looks pretty. Look at that. Doesn't it look gorgeous? Mmm. Okay, you can tell I'm pretty excited about this. So how do you how do you make this optimization thing work for you? Well, it's one step really. All you need to have is a build.js file. Build.js file. You put in all your configuration parameters and it spits out an optimized JavaScript file. So let's go through this. Um, you're gonna need an app.dir, app, app dir, and that's where your files are. The, this is like your source. Your source. DR is your destination. Where do you want the optimized files to be placed? Main configuration file, yep, that points to your common JS file, and which happens to be in my assets JS file uh, folder. So um, instead of me having to redefine all these paths and whatever, it's a bit annoying. It gets a bit annoying if you have a lot of them, like I do. It can get worse though. So instead of having to do all that, I just reference the main config file and it pulls in all the paths. And modules, this is very important, you want to pay attention. So r.js can optimize your files and then spit out optimized JavaScript files. Now you need to make sure that you get all the files that you need. So instead of, um, you need to tell it 
what files to spit out. Otherwise, it will just combine them all into a single file. So in, in this case, um, and this is like the, the preferred way of doing things, you would have a common layer, so a file called common.js or whatever, which has all the frequently used JavaScript libraries, so that, you know, I don't know, your jQuery, your underscore, all the stuff that you would commonly use across several pages, you'd put in a common layer. And then you'd be able to include that file once, you know, on all those different pages. And that, and, and that file, you know, kind of includes all your general libraries, like I said. So it would create a common.js in your built directory. If you look here, you will find a uh, common.js. And that includes your jQuery underscore bootstrap, all that goodness. Mmm, look at that. It's huge. Yeah, but it's got everything. It's got everything in there. All right. And you would have individual pages as well. So some pages require their own little, you know, nuance, whatever, JavaScript, and that's typical, right? So you'd create JavaScript files for each of those individual pages. You'd need to list them down in here. So page slash index would include page slash index, and make sure to exclude common, because you don't want to include jQuery and all that crap in there as well, because the files are going to end up being huge. It's going to be horrible. So what you do is you exclude these, exclude everything in common, and only include the things you need in page slash index. Okay? So you're not copying and pasting stuff all over the place and having huge JavaScript files. And that's why your index is so tiny. Look at that. So tiny. Oh, it's so tiny. Oh, he's so old. All right. Sorry about that. Same thing goes for um, page app slash index. Also happens to be another page that I have. Whatever. Now, paths, this is important. This is important. If you don't want the r.js thing to break when you try to run it, then you need to make sure that anything that is running off a CDN has to be referenced with MT. Now, that makes sure that because in my common.js, right, in my common.js here, I'm using, um, I'm using the CDN hosted version for jQuery, it cannot pull stuff in from the internet and do all that optimization stuff. So it gets confused. So what you do instead is you just tell it empty. And empty makes, uh, empty basically forces it to use the jQuery file that you already have. And then uh, optimize just says which optimization engine you want to use. That's optional. I just put in Unglify 2 for the hell of it. Optimize CSS. This is so cool. It's so cool. Not only does R.js optimize JavaScript files, it also optimizes CSS. How awesome is that? Let me show you some of that CSS goodness. So here I got like a CSS file. View Wordram. Oh my god, that looks gorgeous. That's all the bootstrap goodness. I actually have like, if you look at, at the source uh, CSS file, it looks nothing like this. I actually use a CSS. Look at that. It takes the imports and it actually puts it into the file. My God! Wow! So amazing! Look at that! Just one big file with everything. Every that's it. Wow! Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm over it. I promise. I'm not gonna get too excited. Remove combined, and that just means if you combine files. So, like jQuery underscore Bootstrap select picker were all combined into common. Do you want to remove the individual files? Yes or no? It's up to you, really. You'll find that it's been removed from here. So. I don't have bootstrap, select picker, whatever. It's been removed. And preserve license comments is false. By default, it's true. So if there are license comments in the JavaScript file, it keeps them. But uh, in this case, I've set it to false. So I don't include the license. You probably want to leave that at true. Um, it's forget about that. I don't even know why it was there. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Why would you want to remove the license comments, you evil person? That's horrible. All right. Anyway, so once your build.js file is done, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Once your build.js file is done, then you need to compile it. And um, this is a piece of cake. All you need to do is call node. And where's your r.js file? In my case, it's under tools r.js. So it's in the tools folder. And then you say dash o and point it to your build.js file. So in this case, it's under tools as well, build.js. Hit enter. 
And there you go. It does a lot of stuff. Optimizing, tracking dependencies, all that great stuff. And in all of two seconds, it's done. It's all set, you know. Life's great. And now if you look at your, uh, your files, everything looks fine and dandy. Single load files, everything's optimized, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Life is good, my friends. Life is good. Now, that's basically it. That's the end of the second part. Now, um, one thing I will tell you is, um, so from, from here on, you can create kind of like your own push script to automatically, like now whenever I need to push anything to the internet, to my EC2 instances, I just say tools push, and it sends it all off into the internet onto my EC2 instances and also up to my uh, S3 cloud and all that good stuff. If you want me to show you exactly how that works, how to automatically do your optimization and push the files onto the internet, then I'll be happy to do another video. Just mention it in the comments below. Just say, Yazin, I want you to show me how to push the stuff online. If you don't, then thank you very much for watching and um, have a wonderful day. Yeah, take it easy.